Hello guys and welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Now after about 3000 hours in Satisfactory I've learned a thing or two and quite often I get asked questions that to me are quite simple but obviously not for newer players. So today I'll, I'll let you in on a few tips that I wish I knew when starting Satisfactory. Although to be fair, back in my day, <laughs> we didn't have a lot of these tools that were available to us. Anyway, we're going to get into it. So the first thing that you can do is check containers using the F key. Notice how we've got items in here. We've got Nobelisk in here and also steel pipes here. Next, we have key bindings. Now, this is one that a lot of people ask quite often. So you can copy items by selecting the build key or the dismantle key, which is F, and then middle mouse button clicking. You can do this for any item that you see and you don't have to remove them. You can just build them as you wish. You can also dismantle items on mass by selecting the F or dismantle button and then holding control and then afterwards just clicking. Voila. Once you've set up a line, did you know that you can actually go in and select the item followed by the underclock or overclock and then either click down here, copy settings or control C to then copy that selection, which can then be pasted using control V or clicking the paste settings. Holding control allows us to put buildables in line with one another. So you can see here, you can see this line. Well, if we hold control, it will snap to that location. This is especially useful when you're building on the ground. So as you can see here, you're trying to get it in line. If you hold control, you've now got this in line. One of my other favorite uh, key bindings allows us to change the spleen of the item. So if we take a pipeline or a um, hyper, hyper tube, goodness me, uh, we can actually hold down R to change the type of spleen, spline, um, to change how its um, outcome is. So here you can see it's a straight line. If we select vertical, it allows us to build with this uh, lovely little right angle. The next one allows us to pick associated items with the given buildable we have selected. So if we go ahead and grab this foundation, we can actually hold down E, which will bring up a radial dial, like before, of similar items. This can be done for anything in game. So for example, we have the pipeline, we have constructors. This just allows us to build things much quicker. Speaking of building things much quicker, you can see that we have a selection of hotkeys in the bottom of our screen, which allows us to build various items. Well, you can actually remap these depending on what you want by going into the menu and then selecting the various items and whilst hovering over, clicking a hotkey number associated with that. So for example, we want this to be number five. We click number five while it's over and voila, you see it's here. But even better yet, if you control, hold down control and use the mouse wheel, you can see that we have up to 10 hot bars, hot key bars. So why not use a particular hot bar for conveyors, then for piping, then for constructors, and so on. This can be really useful if you're doing lots of building. Satisfactory is no doubt a beautiful game. Whether you have a fantastic factory that you want to show off or you've seen a beautiful sunrise that you want to take a picture of, you can actually go into pressing P, which will allow you to go into your photo mode. And by middle clicking the mouse um, button, you can actually get a free view. This is great if you just want to take a photo or if you want to do a nice gliding recording, as you can see me doing a lot of my videos. Going back to buildables, if we select N in game, we have this quick search bar, which is great. We can select something like a smart splitter without needing to go through the menu. And from here, we can actually build these. Also, this menu is great for if you're doing maths, you can quickly use the inbuilt calculator to find out what maths you need for a given production line. 
just so you are aware, the, the map is one big map. So we have the plains, which is just below us. We also have the rocky desert to the left, the forest, which is right in front of us at the top, and then the dune desert, which you can't see right at the top right hand end of the screen in the white zone. It's all one map. Make sure that you collect all the items that you see on the floor for the first time. These are great because you can then go over to the MAM, although I won't be able to because I've already researched them, but you can go here and then select what type that is, for example, quartz, and research this tree, which will unlock new buildables such as the Explorer or the radio um, signal towers. Caterium is also great because it gives you other buildables such as the zip line, the blade runners, but more importantly, the smart splitter and programmable splitter, which we'll be talking about later. So back when Satisfactory was first released, we didn't actually have elevators. They came in the first update, which meant we had to do something like this in order to bring items up, or we had to use um, various systems with walls. Thankfully though, we now have elevators, though they do come with a few caveats. So we're going to be talking about them now. So the first thing that we want to do is look at the elevator. So notice how we have this here. Our first click is going to be the input and the second one, the output. So this cannot be changed, unfortunately, but there is a way that we can work around this. Say, for example, you want uh, this section to be the output, you would build the a conveyor leading away in the direction that you want it to go and then place this first. Now you can see that we've placed the output and now the input little triangle is selected so that we can place that here. But that is unfortunately the only way that you can wrestle with that. Often, if you're running a stacked conveyor line, you want to be able to have the conveyors enter an elevator or come down from an elevator and maintain the same distance. This can be frustrating to do making a tiered luck, but we can do this quite easily by making sure that we place a conveyor pole. If we place a foundation here, this will actually help us. And then two spots away, so one, two, we can place one of these. And then again, another two, um, increments away, we can place another higher one. Now, if we delete these, we can now grab the conveyor elevator, place it on the first one, and then bring it down, followed by the second one, just above that, and then the third one, just above that. And this way, we can continue our elevators going along a straight line and looking pretty clean. Obviously, you can delete these after. Now, I will be talking about another option called Cheatcrete a little later on that might help you with this. The other day, I was asked about how I align an elevator with these if you're down here. Well, there isn't, unfortunately, guidelines. For example, when we used Control earlier, we don't get them appearing when we're doing the elevator. So how do we know if they're further away where to place them? Well, we have the conveyor pole here, which is one meter off the ground. This is ground level. If we're going to be placing an elevator and it's on the ground, this will be at the correct level. Once we know that, we can also look at the stackable conveyor poles. Now, if you're running a conveyor bus, chances are they're going to be on these stackable lines. These are two meters high, which is important because an elevator has increments of one meter. So for example, if I look away, hopefully I'll be able to get this first time. This is the first level. And then if we go up two, you'll find that this one is going to be in line with the middle conveyor. And this one up here will be in line with the top one. So unfortunately, there isn't an easy way to do this. It's all about counting and knowing how many spaces you've got available. The last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to elevators is where you're going to be placing them. Well, an elevator can be placed if it's going down, either on the edge or one away from the edge. No further than this. If we place it here, you'll find that we're clipping through and it doesn't work. So you're going to want to place this either here or here. 
Now what this allows us to do is have either a really flush elevator or one that's slightly pushed out. Usually I prefer the flushed one. Alternatively, if you're starting from the ground and working your way up a um, vertical uh, surface, you can either build from the center or one in front towards the wall. So this one's obviously going to be the tighter one, as you can see here, or one that's slightly further away. Though I said that was the last tip when it comes to elevators, we will talk very briefly on cheat creep. So cheat creep is something that's really useful in game, but we don't we won't have access to in the upcoming updates because they're going to be working a, a vanilla way of doing this without this being classed as a bug. So this is cheat creep one of the down corner ramps. Now, if we place down the elevator, generally speaking, you see we can't place anything through this. It's clipping and so it, it's coming up as encroaching others clearance. However, Cheatcrete allows us to build through this. Now, this is really useful if you're trying to build those stackable conveyors. As you can see, we can now build onto here. Now I'm using the smart mod i will talk about that in a moment as well to build this but as you can see i can now place these in line with where i want them so that i can build this line now if you do have any questions or any other ideas that you'd like me to to help you out with then by all means do place them in the comment section and we'll cover them um, hopefully in an upcoming video if not you can join me in our twitch live streams and i'm happy to help you there as well so here's a new tip for update four so say you have these refineries here maybe you want to have it so that the top is covered unfortunately as you can see we have um, the encroaching again. Now, of course, we can use the cheat cream, which is here, and we can double this up to create a flat surface. However, perhaps you don't want to cover the funnels. Well, thankfully, we've got the walkways, which now allow us to clip the, or snap, I should say, foundations to them. So if we bring them here, you can see how we can actually go forwards with this and snap it to any point in a one meter um, increment. So from this, we can actually place this slightly forwards and then use cheat creep once again, where are you? To create these little sections where the funnels come through whilst covering the rest of the build. You'll see me use it in my Mega Factory series at the moment that I keep everything to the same grid. It's just going to be much easier later on when I'm trying to merge two factories together. So I will actually run a long uh, line of foundations from one factory to where the next one wants to be and then start building that factory and then delete that line so that I know that everything is on the same grid. Ah, the glorious 90 degree turn. Uh, this can actually be really easily achieved. Um, with two simple techniques. The first one with the conveyor belts is just to um, build it to where you want and then use the mouse wheel to change it to the 90 degree corner. Um, however, you can also do this nice and easy by grabbing a conveyor pole and placing it down and then counting in front, one, two, and then one, two. So we've got two places, one, two, one, and then these two as well. Um, we can now then build this ooh, in a nice 90 degree, degree turn. We can also do this with pipes. So again, one, two, and then one, two. So here we'll be able to build another 90 degree turn. Now, when it comes to factory design, a lot of people have asked me how I've designed a relatively clean factory in my Let's Play, as it's easy to quickly make everything look messy in game as you can see i've done here don't worry we'll be changing this later on now a simple design to get started with is to run a bus up the middle to your storage area this is going to hold all of your produced items then what you can do is either side of the bus create little factories that draw items from the factory 
onto the bus going to the storage area and then you have the inputs of resources on the outside. This starts you off. This is useful for early game but once it gets more complicated it's going to be more difficult to do. Another option though for cleaner designs is to build a factory dedicated to each item in different places. That way you don't need to worry about sprawling lines crossing over each other. You just need to take in all the raw resources in one factory and build that particular item and then ship that off to your main factory. In Satisfactory there are two techniques to loading your factory. But here you can see how the two systems work. On the left we have the manifold and as you can see this is going to prioritize the first input so that you get 50% of what's going through this to here then the second one 50% of what goes to this one will go through here and so on. So this looks inefficient at first compared to the load balancer which equally distributes everything from one input to five um, containers in this um, circumstance. However, the manifold is just as efficient as the load balancer when the line is fully saturated. So when you're running a manifold line along constructors, you'll see the whole line seize up uh, being fully saturated. And at that point, it will be running efficiently at 100%, the same as a load balancer would. The difference though is that the load balancer does it all straight away. So this will take longer to set up. This will take longer to warm up, sorry. Whereas this actually takes longer to set up because you have to do the maths and sorting out all the splits, which further on as you get into the game becomes increasingly more difficult as you're playing with decimals. The next thing that I want to talk about are the four lights on your um, manufacturing uh, buildings in Satisfactory. So we have green, yellow, red and the whitey blue which you can see on the right hand side. Green means that it's running and everything is okay. Yellow means that it's st on standby waiting for resources to be given to it. Red means that it's not running for whatever reason. Either it's not got power or it doesn't have the resource selected. And the bluey white colour means that it's either underclocked and overclocked but running. So if this machine, in fact, we can we can actually jump down and take the resources out. You can see that because it's not running, it's waiting for resources. It's now gone to yellow. But as soon as we place them back in, it goes back to white and blue. This is a great way to look at your factory from afar and see what's happening. If there are any problems in the background. The next thing that I want to talk about is overclocking. So we're just going to get a touch on it just a little in detail. So the first thing is when it comes to things like fuel generators that generate power. Well, if we quickly go in and grab this, we'll actually take all of these out for this that particular example. And we'll also put in another hundred here. You can see that this is generating 150 megawatts of power and consuming 12 uh, meters cubed of fuel per minute. Well, if we overclock this by 200%, you'd expect this to be 300 megawatts, but that isn't the case. Though the target is 300, we're only hitting 255.7 megawatts output. But at the same time, it's only using 20.45 rather than 24. So this means that, let's place this in and just show this off so that we can uh, make our point. If we go to 250%, you can see we're actually hitting the 300 megawatt threshold, even though it should be higher because we're at 250 megawatts, it should be 375. You can also see that we're only taking up 24.28 um, cubes of uh, fuel. So although we're not um, losing anything, we're not reaching our full um, potential with overclocking, we are still getting 300 megawatts at roughly the same amount of fuel that it would take. So it's still beneficial to overclock your fuel plants 
if you do have the resources available. However, when it comes to, let's just grab some of these because I'll probably need them. If we go back over here, when it comes to overclocking a um, constructor, you can see here that we are running at four megawatts and producing 30 per minute. If we double this up to 200%, after this it should go up, you can see that we're producing 100% uh, more, but we're actually going to be using 12.1 megawatts. So this is actually three times the amount of power rather than two times. This is because overclocking exponentially increases the amount of power consumed. So if we do this, you'll see that we're now consuming 17.3 megawatts per megawatts in order to run this. If, however, we put the underclock on this factory, you'll notice how it's gone down to one megawatt at 41%. If we go at 100% speed, you'll notice it's four megawatts. Just wait for this to, to do. So, so as you can see, four megawatts taking six seconds and we're producing 30 per minute. We're going to go down to 50%, which means we should be producing 15 per minute. But look what happens to the megawatts here. So we are producing 15 per minute. However, we've actually decreased the power consumed by more than half. It's 1.3 rather than what we would be expecting as two megawatts. So it can be really beneficial if you're struggling with power in the early game to build more machines and underclock them than to build less and overclock them. So the next thing that I wanted to briefly talk about was how to create a storage system using smart splitters. Smart splitters are unlocked, as we mentioned earlier, in the MAM with the Caterium tree. So if we go ahead and place down these five cons um, containers followed by five smart splitters, we'll also place down a awesome sink for this example. Let's just place that over here and then run this along. Actually, let's upgrade these to Mark II. Oh, quick, quick tip for those who didn't realize. <laughs> you can upgrade belts by just hovering over them. So we'll connect this in a second. As you can see, we've got an assortment of items here. And what we're going to be doing is clicking this as overflow. And then on the, the at right output, this one, we're going to be placing what resource we want going into here. So this will be iron plates. This can be iron rods. Oh, and we'll also click this as overflow. This one can be, what do we have in there? Concrete. And this one again, overflow. This one will be copper sheets. And this one again, overflow. What else do we have in there? Okay, and this one can be plastic. So again, we're selecting overflow and then plastic. Now in a factory setting, I would actually have these on separate lines rather than one bus because we're uh, going to um, struggle with throughput with this one. But if we connect these up, we will see that everything is going to be sorted Unfortunately, we don't have steel pipes selected for anything. So this is going to be overflown over to the sink, which will be sunk straight away. In fact, I think we can upgrade these belts further, can't we? There we go. So now we have iron. Ah, 
<laughs> so what's happened here is because our belt speed's not quick enough, um, it's being overflown to the sink. But here you can see, providing we've got a fast enough line, we've got all of our iron going into the first container and then any excess is being overflown. This will soon change to the next item. So here you can now see that we've got the plastic going through to the next line. And then we will have the next resource, copper sheets going across. Anything that's um, too much for the system to handle is overflown to the sink. That way you can take items out of here or out of this one, and then it will fill up as it goes. And then once again, once it's full, sink the items. So it's a simple way to build a nice little storage facility for you. And the great thing about using the awesome sink is that it does generate coupons for us. So what we sink gets put into coupons, so we've got 77 there, which we can eventually take out. And then if we build the awesome shop next door to it, we can actually spend this on new buildable items in game, which you may not have unlocked. A lot of people also ask how I fly or how I do build multiple items all at once. Well, this is done through mods. So I use the fixit.app in order to install them. It's really simple if you want them. And uh, smart, this one that allows us to build multiple is one that I definitely recommend checking out. And I guess we could say our 30th tip, although I think we've actually already covered 30 tips, is you can actually help other players in game by helping them find this video by clicking the like button if you found it useful for new players. But anyway, guys, I hope you did find it useful. If you did, let me know which tip is most used for you or if you have any tips you'd recommend new players, let them know in the comment section below. But I have to say thank you so much guys for watching and thank you so much to our amazing supporters, most notably our Solar Eclipse Patrons, the Calamity and Cerebral Tag, as well as our Lunar Eclipse Patrons, Dixie Chris and James Irwin, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Schlom. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.